Hello. Welcome back to the show. Today, I wanted to go a little bit meta and talk about projections with regards to ideas, knowledge, and data. And now, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sure how I would approach the topic because it's kind of very IT-ish and I am someone who has a background in IT. I got I have a bachelor in IT, but the topic is relevant to YouTube at least like it's relevant to also many things but also to YouTube. So I'll try to explain things with like more simplistic in a more simplistic way than I would usually do but I'll, I'll try my best we'll see how it goes so uh, to begin with I have to confess that uh, the same way I always whine about my unending struggle with meta I also struggle in the same kind of context actually with metaization of data if you can say something like that now what the fuck is that <laughs> uh, imagine that you have a form like an online form where you have to fill in your username, I don't know, like your name, surname, last name, middle name, whatever, age, date, but I don't know, don't give a fuck. Anything, like any data about you. If you think about that form, it's very clear that you basically have like data fields um, you have keys and you have values you you have like signifiers and the signified you have a generic case and a specific case like for example name and the specific name might be Bobby or Johnny or whatever Mary <laughs> same way you have like age and shit so in the computer in programming we need to store this data and one of the most like one of the efficient I wouldn't say the most but one of the efficient ways people came up with in terms of how to store some data is a table you have a header at the top and then you have the fields and all like for for every data piece like name surname and shit like that you have an individual column and for every form submission for like every time somebody sends this form to your website you create a new new line in the table and you row and you put all the data in there now if we take a look at this row it actually does not contain all the necessary data by itself the row only has values but if we just isolate it, there is no way to interpret that. Like, imagine a person named Bobby John or whatever. And like Bobby is his first name, uh, John is his middle name or whatever. And Phil is his last name. Now you look at the table and like three names are in there, Bobby, John and Phil. How do you interpret those? 
which one of them is his first, which is his middle, which is his last. Like, how do we know that? And I, people might say, well, you know, they are what first, middle, and last, so they're in order. Okay, still, ter still not not a good respond response, but whatever. I'll give you this. For example, uh, there is like, I don't know. Uh, his mother's and his father's names, for whatever reason, must be in this form, and it's like uh, I don't know. What what is what is the same name across genders? <laughs> I don't know. Mary, <laughs> Mary. I think a guy can be named Mary. So it's like Mary. And how do you know which one is which one is which? Which is the girl and which is the dude? Which is his mom and which is his daddy? <laughs> and also like. Oh, so many other ways like what if what if he has to enter in some parameters about him like his age and then I don't know his shoe size maybe we are a shop maybe maybe we are we're a, a sh an online shop that sells boots or whatever how do we interpret the data well there is no way to really interpret it in a single row in order to interpret one row, you need the header that actually contains all the information, like which field in a row, which cell responds to what piece of data about the person. So when we have a table and we like a single piece of data that we add to the table is not self-sufficient. It needs the row, the, not the row, the heading. Now why did I even bring this up? I brought this up to show you the idea that when we store data in the computer, our information is not necessarily self-contained. This is the point about projections. Uh, when you take this form data the person entered and then you take the data they entered and you somehow store it in the computer, actually not everything is stored. The only thing that is stored in my example is the specific data they entered, but the interpretation of the data is not stored. Well, we have it in the header, but in the piece of data, like if we just take out the ones and zeros that were added, the interpretation is nowhere to be found. We don't know which one is which which field means what and like more even we can look at it even even in more detail and just say take a look at ones and zeros and ask a question well how do we even interpret that like there are all sorts of different encodings even for text like there is ANSI you probably heard of it and Unicode that's like emojis and shit how do we know which encoding do we use? So you see, there are even more levels, more layers to this onion of data projection. Something a person entered, we don't actually store everything. We just only store some kind of little piece of it and then rely on the, what do you call it? It's not the area, it's like the surroundings to interpret that data properly like the table header or the software that runs it for example that software only uses unicode therefore we are sure that whatever was typed in was actually unicode and whatever is produced will be unicode because that's what the sof software works with so now imagine a guy 
making a online like a web page for this forum to be submitted and here we come to a very interesting little problem in an ideal world like imagine the machine or like some spherical human dude in in vacuum or human dudas or whatever whatever you would like to imagine you know <laughs> uh, in a vacuum we would only need as a developer of that web page to specify which fields a person needs to enter like for example I can just write name surname date age and I might add like data types to each I may write I don't know a text name text like middle name text last name or like date birthday or something like that but in general that's it that's like the information we actually need and when you have to write that form the ideal case is that you just write down that that's it that's the only thing we need to know for a web page like ostensibly need to know for a web page to render and show all the data now that might actually not be all that simple and why is that you see on a web page in its simplest form you not only have the fields and their names but you also have like placeholders examples for people you know to just understand things at a glance so they don't have to read the little title they just can glance at this kind of grayish text already in the field it's like Bobby John the second I don't know whatever. and they're like okay I see first name middle name last name or something like that or they see a date and they like already type it in their birthday it's easier it's better visual experience for the user so is this like placeholder thing a part of the form is this something that should be a part of the model where we have like data types and uh, field names yeah you see see you see what's going on here it shouldn't be but it kind of is it's a part of the view of the representation it's a part of the projection on the page but it's not necessarily a part of the data itself it's it's like an, it's weird it's a part of the projection it's like the header back in the database on the computer it's not a part of the record but like of this one single row but it's sort of a part of the interpretation of how the web page should be viewed and this is me not even getting into translations like if you have translations how do you fucking deal with that name in russian would be email and how how what do you do about a gazillion translations are they a part of the data well no with i guess with, with translation it's a little bit easier because they are clearly part of interpretation and like the this most blunt way to do the to do translation would be to just use english everywhere inside but then use actual uh, language uh, 
when we are presenting the page to the user like it takes a name and then it looks up what the language it should be translated to and it's anything else but English well there you fucking go you, you get a translation but again in order to translate you need meta you need context to properly translate oh so many things so you cannot just shove one one word in a translator like computer little module and get yourself a translation out of it you need to shove in context and for different languages there might be different contexts that need be there like for example Russian in English the word name is genderless it's like it is universal but it's not everywhere it's not ever so it's like there's so many little fucks that just need to be taken account of in terms of how we present a web page and it's just the data is simple like the problem is supposed to be a very simple problem we just want your data person just give us your data I don't know for whatever reason but in terms of how we render a web page for them to enter it and how we store it back on the server first of all these are two completely different things and then they are fucking non-trivial that's ridiculous there's there's ridiculous levels of complexity to all of this and uh, <laughs> If you ever did any sort of IT, you know how many freaking like models and practices there are to do in this shit. Like MVC, Model View Controller, is just a very generic one. There are like, I, I cannot quite remember them, but there's like, go look it up. MVVP, if I'm not sure there is such a thing model view view presentation with like different views I, I, i'm not I'm, i don't quite remember um uh, maybe maybe I, I said something something stupid but in general there was like a lot of crazy ways in terms of how we take the same data and we work with it in different ways and now this is me not even getting into the idea that not only we need data in those different ways in the database in the in the on the web page but we also need to send it and that is an entirely different thing again and now what i began with 18 fucking minutes ago was this idea that I said I always struggle with metaization of data what I meant by that I gave you a simple example we have a database where we have all the information stored we have like a link between the database and the web page like this connection whatever the internet thing where we send things and then we have the web page okay now what i called metaization of data was that i always whenever i do computer programming i always struggle i want to keep the data structure identical in all three stages so that the data structure actually does not change we work with the same basic like data nodule if, if you can think about it that way it's like I don't know uh, <laughs> imagine imagine like a piece of music it's an mp3 file or whatever and you can you can send it to your friend you can listen on listen to it on your phone the bits the ones and zeros are actually everywhere the same and you can just like share it around and you know send it to your friend and shit like that 
this is the kind of thing that I actually want. And this is the kind of thing, like, with the music, you can kind of do this because there is one universal format, one recognizable format in terms of how the music is played. There is a lot of in-place context. Like, for example, an mp3 file is just a file. So when we send it to a server, it's just ones and zeros. The server knows how to save a file. It just saves a file, that's it. Server doesn't care about the mp3 part. When you send it across the network, also network doesn't really care that it's an mp3. It just knows how to send it. It's just like ones and zeros, send it. And the clients, the majority of clients, by clients I mean like phones, computers, and shit like that, browsers, everything, they know how to play this. There's a lot of context, interpreted in context in place. You just shove an mp3 down a browser's throat, they play it without even blinking. They know what it is. They recognize the format. Okay, there you go. An mp3 got, got yourself a song. With uh, forms and with data, it's not as simple. Because, like, I guess there, is, there are formats that are universal. Like, I don't know, say JSON, for example. JSON is a pretty universal type of thing. But, in terms of what things need to coexist with this data, there is, like, a lot more problems to be solved every time. Because in the database, we usually need not just the data itself, but we need something, some metadata about it, I don't know. When was it created? Like all sorts of information that is part of the original that we might use as developers, as like a company, but that the user didn't enter. The user just, just sent very basic things. Like that should be in the database, that should be part of the data set, part of all the information that we have. When we send it across the network, we need to also add information about how is the package sent, like where is their success. Perhaps when we send a request and response, we might want to filter some information. Because for example, I don't know, uh, say you're developing a social network web page or whatever because you want to do a new Facebook because the one existing it's old and for boomers I don't know <laughs> so you want like for example you have friends and you have uh, blocked users and shit like that and a block use blocked user access enters your page you don't want your computer to actually send all of your data to them. Even if the web page is not going to show it, because the web page will recognize, hey, this user is blocked, will only show the picture and the name, and the rest will just say it's blocked. If you send it, it's already on their computer. If they know how, they'll just take all the data. They'll know everything about you, despite the fact that you blocked them. So you need to somehow be able to filter the data. And then, like, there's just so many things. And then when we view the data, again, for example, we have the data and we use it in a form. Or we have that same data and we want to present it to a user in their profile. And, like, there's just so many ways. I want the, like, the form to be simple I want like if I have a data type a data structure like for example user information and we have all the necessary user information I want to just be able to know which fields I require and have a form automatically there for me but it just doesn't work like that you have to go and actually rewrite the entire shit by hand because there is 
more to it. You need to copy what you already have, modify it, basically create a projection, but not an automatic, but handmade, because you need to incorporate fucking styles into it maybe i don't know the field for the name need to be a little bigger than the rest because it looks cuter that way you need to incorporate translation into that it's just, just and like placeholders and shit there's just so fucking much to this entire thing and that's the same across the three component components that i just that i discussed with you it's the same for the for the web page, the same for the transition, transaction or whatever, the, the in between, it's the same for the server. You have to rewrite the same exact data multiple fucking times. Because when you do a projection, you kind of have to specify how you want things to be projected. Yeah. That. So why? <laughs> 26 minutes ago, why did I even start about all of that? I hope by now you kind of see my point that when you have data, it's not simple. It's not easy to just get a projection out of it. Like, there's so much more to it. Well, YouTube is a lot like that. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> oh my fucking god. YouTube is a lot like that. On YouTube, what we do, YouTubers, is we have some data and we, like, we have this entire thing, I don't know, internet f phenomena of, like, fucking, is there a bike? Yeah, there's a bike. Okay, that was a bike. <laughs> they just flew by. Man, they're loud. So what, what I was talking about is with the internet, you have like the entire information, like view information as world, you know, and then you have to somehow get a projection out of it and like shove it in a video. And you are necessarily cutting things off. Like imagine I just like look at the bushes in the background you see right now there is a projection of world in your frame it's like cut in this little square thing it's projected onto the camera lens and there you go you have some projection of world but like some things are being chopped off and here you see like there's shrubbery like the, this bush is not entirely in frame like that bush is not entirely in frame like the road is not completely there you see some of it is blocked by my shoulder but we all know that it's behind it like and the sky is kind of sucky because of the way the light works and the cameras it's kind of all white which is uh, i hate it when it happens i really want an hdr camera but okay fuck me i guess so with the information it's the same kind of thing you do research you prepare some some things and within it like in the frame a bush can get cut off whereas when we talk about concepts and ideas an idea being cut off on oh, them stupid fucking bike an idea being cut off is not as innocent as the bush being cut off because if a, if because if you put the idea in the video if it's part of this information model in the first place it is somehow important it is important to your model of whatever you are trying to describe but if you cannot include the entire thing because it's just like huge in itself that leaves out a big part of the video like a uh, big big part of the concept itself you are explaining something but at the end of the day you're just saying well i explained it in the context 
remember my my talk about how we had header and then like the data the, the little row it's the same thing we have this little row but look there's like actual headers somewhere out there we have like this and this and this that we're just taking for granted like the positions of elements in a row but there's a header somewhere out there you need to go ahead and look it up you know <laughs> and for that header if i were to make a video about that data there's going to be more context like i said for example unicode or ansi the, which text encryptions they use what kind of computer i don't know byte order they run on there's like all sorts of shit so yeah that is why making content is damn fucking hard because for me it's always but where do i stop <laughs> like where do you draw the line in terms of what to talk about and what to not talk about oh, i beg your pardon yeah woke up too early today because i went into bed too late today but whatever uh so to summarize oh one last thing these kind of videos ranty very easy very simple you know i just ran about and when i think i ran it enough when i feel like i ran it enough i just like cut it off fuck it <laughs> i'm going fucking home <laughs> Whereas with informational videos, well, like the scripts I'm trying desperately to write, well, fuck me. And another thing, another thing, a change, change. When you do a video and then you realize you were wrong, well, how do you, you don't quite change it, do you? You can like put shit in the comments section, but the video would have already been out there okay it's, it's beginning to rain quite heavily so fuck me i guess i'll see you all next time i think i read it about everything i wanted today it was about how data is hard to project and, and yeah and and why why youtubers such uh, such whiny bitches well at least me <laughs> anyway thank you all and i'll see you all next time bye bye <laughs>